we're live. Welcome to another episode of our uh, show. Here we go. Cooking with Blake, 2017. 2017. J- July 24th, 2017. We're on a uh, Harlem, New York rooftop at the Hard House. We got some amazing artistic projects happening here. Check them out. So today, we're just having a uh, philosophical discussion about the power of what science is calling scalar waves, what man calls the, the power of prayer, what ancient civilizations would call the power of visualizing the future. Uh, in quantum physics, we would think of it as to create the present moment through your observations, you manifest a future and a past only when you solidify your decision-making observation energy in the present moment. The past and the future do not exist until you create the present moment decision. This is man's gift to have uh, a sort of, lack of a better term, a sort of power over his own existence uh, or a free will, they could call it. Um, do you have anything to add to that? Guillermo Perez? Hello, I am Guillermo Perez. <clears throat> uh, faith I think that uh, there's, a, there's a certain degree of you can quantify faith to a certain degree and I think that breaks into what Blake is talking about the quantification of faith which means to me how faith relates to my person so when you're cultivating and I strengthen it, why am I doing it? Remember uh, the, the in Psalm 51, it says that the true sacrifice of Jehovah is a pure heart. You know, so it tells us that he doesn't want material things. He wants a pure heart as sacrifice and worship. And prayer comes into effect because it's faith building and it develops a steadfast spirit and a tenacity for loving what's righteous and maximizing your potential you're living your life to a full human potential so when you gear your life to that God becomes the anchor and the reward for that is the protection and the wisdom gained from experience. Now, respecting experience, and that also now, experience now breaks into what, uh, what, what, what I think Blake was talking about earlier too. So, so far, that's what I, what, that's, those right. are, that's my, my, my that's mad. <laughs> So I wanna get into a, a technique now of how to use this energy to, uh, to, to get into harmony, to find synchronicities throughout this harmonious scale that is all around us at all times. This interwoven web, every single connection of this interwoven web is a harmony. Uh, it can be put on a certain vibration, a certain frequency, and they're forever out, forever in, based on infinity, which we can never truly understand. So to even begin to comprehend or quantify this energy called faith, begins there at that journey of trying to understand infinity which for whatever reason at least for me I can't speak for everyone else but you cannot really comprehend the idea of infinity because we have this ever moving expanding energy that is ex- expanding into this unknown area and right there we've lost the entire we've just quantified and made a beginning and end and lost the entire battle of discovering infinity so once we can all come to a terms and agreement that nobody really understands infinity, therefore we really truly know, knowledge-wise, memorize, quantify, nothing. We can really know nothing in a logical manner of the, the sense of the word, knowledge. Uh, now this is where we're going to have to have faith at some point. And faith is the same power that magnifies your frequency. So to magnify your frequency, 
You must put a belief into the unknown, the thing that you're not certain about. And therein lies the great test of test for the human being to expand your consciousness and free yourself from your psychological cage and the trap that other entities have set against you. Those other entities are also part of yourself. So the battle always begins within. So the technique I'm talking about of creating the present moment and therefore solidifying the past and the future to make a sort of momentary truth that you can stack up in a timeline and call it your life. Um, you visualize what you want to see. Therefore you're creating a future and a past in the same moment until you're able to manifest it into the present moment and it becomes a reality that we live in. So when you visualize what you want to happen, the outcome, I visualize my family being happy and, and, and having fun and enjoying their lives. And I visualize my friends having fun and being happy. Everybody's just doing good. Even in the moments of, of sadness and heartache and life and death, uh, there's a better, wiser understanding of the entire cycle of all existence and nature. And you can come to easier terms with your life and your, and your necessary negative energies that may be involved in your life are not misinterpreted into this thing that we perceive as being evil. Evil doesn't have to actually exist for there to be good. There only has to be a negative and a positive interaction that creates harmony. Uh, man's interpretation of the negative force is what we call evil. And does that mean that there is no bad and therefore balancing good in a yin yang fashion of infinity? Yes, there is that. There is that. But in this existence that we live in, we have this free will, observation, self creating energy that was either gifted to us, we grew it, or we sprang from DNA. You want to say we evolved uh, from a monkey, you want to say that we, uh, a God put us here. None of it explains infinity. None of it explains God. So you, you, you're right back where we started from. Once we can get there and realize that, okay, ignorance is not bliss and faith is not ignorance, there, there's a huge difference. This faith energy is what makes you reach different octaves and keep climbing up the scale. And then you have a huge influence. And then people will feel that wave that has passed through them. And then you're coinciding in a, in a harmonious uh, Fibonacci sequence growing output of waves that are, are grow together as a species so we can escape this psychological cell together. We get out of this Sigmund Freud-like cage where we, our minds are thinking only in, in words and letters and the pictures that we imagine are only small representations of our day-to-day of our -day lives. Whereas one little thing in my mind the dog represents this beast in my mind. Um, simple, simple psychological things. There is a whole nother universe past this cage. Because this cage, this psychological cage, is what is keeping mankind enslaved to themselves, to the banking system, to money itself. Escape the psychological cage by visualizing outcomes visualizing outcomes, then growing your visualizations into something that's not even earthly anymore. You're visualizing outcomes in space. You're visualizing outcomes into the astral plane, the dream world of imagination, which is your greatest gift of all. That you can tap into this unknown world and, and your consciousness can flow freely through the entire universe if all you do is try and embrace this, this unknowable energy that exists out there and believe in something and you believe in something, and once you truly, truly, truly believe in something, your energy will magnify. I think Blake touched on the, um, the application of faith. That's the, 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 the quantum mechanics and the application of faith, basically. So it's the science of manifesting it. So it, it, again, he touched also on the application. So. The tenacity to perfect that masterpiece, which is oneself, and doing it and offering it to 
what you believe it to be the creator or a creator. Even if you believe yourself is the creator, even if that is your belief, you believe that yourself is a creator or tapped into the great creator, or even if, uh, you know, even if you believe in nothing, you still believe and you're going to be amazed. You can call it nothing all you want. Application. See, application. You know, the delivery of the stroke. So it makes the written word so beautiful because it's the levels, the intention, the gesture, and then the language. Then there's the actual stroke, biomechanics in the body. So it's acknowledging nature and, and the beauty and its perfection. It's perfect. And, and its imperfection, which makes it perfect. Broken symmetry. The, the circle... Has, it can have beginning and ends. The, the spiral has broken symmetry and can never stop growing. It can never stop growing in all directions. But the, the conscious the conscious mind is not subject to those quantum physics. No, it's not. There's Only the, the psychological cage is. But that's why training your conscience and keeping a, a, a right. through, through the work. You have to work. What is the work? How do you train your conscience? Train your conscience by having an anchor of values which you study scientifically. That is one way to train your conscience. Well, it helps. It's That's it, one it's, way to train your conscience. Yeah. It helps. That's one way to start. Now, uh, now let's, let's share some more evolved theories of ways of training your conscience. And then the, the, the modified backpack self-training level of... <laughs> Training one's conscience to do what? You see, you see what I mean? So he's like, I right. want to be as productive, productive as I can be to my maximum output. Why? Because I love, I love my creator and I love my family and my friends. So I am my best. So that's the drive. That's my anchor. That's what ties me to all of it, to my universe. Now my studies and my sciences of my universe now and what the conscience of the matter and my daily decisions and the interaction with society, humans, um, cyborgs out there, you know what I mean? You got some robots, you know? There's some robots out there, you know? So, and, and then the, 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 the other, you know, creatures in the jungle. Now, that's my, that's here what we're talking about. And that's, that's a way of martial art, you know? That's how it's, my first martial art is the thought. And then I will say the stroke. That muscle, the thought. So I use it to make a garden out of my community, my society, and to live and help and be productive to my friends and my family. What do you use your conscience for? The conscious is an, the consciousness is an amazing gift that really I'm just starting to be able to tap into. Uh, and what I find is, again, when I when I can get past these little snares uh, of psychological resemblance. Like what? Let's break those down for people. Uh, like for instance, what, what could some, be a snare, some, a some psychological snare. Like uh, the, what your own thoughts. Words are a huge psychological snare because they have so many already preordained, slow-moving attachments to them. Uh, our basic language is very limiting. Using words to express ourselves, and poetry is very beautiful and it evokes, you know, endless amazing things can happen. Yes, songwriting. Yes, uh, but just using the language to communicate itself is a very primal form. Uh, past that, we have the, the mental communication, where we're still using uh, psychological things that represent something to us. To a lot of people, alcohol is going to represent something bad and something negative. So when something bad or something negative is, is, is happening to you in the dream world of your life, your brain will show you a symbol of this bottle of alcohol. Or like, sometimes when I feel, I used to feel embarrassed as a young, I would have a flash in my mind of like, uh, me holding a gun. Because somewhere in my mind that, you know, some weird little fallback thing was, well, if I had this gun in my hand, I would be, I would feel protected. Very weak, very weak chain of thought to begin with. But you see how the psychological mind works in bringing imagery to represent something. 
based in fear, or based in many different aspects, like interpretations of dreams and things like this. Uh, now, the battle of freeing the consciousness is getting outside of this psychological symbolic cage, you know. And we've been caged in by the way numbers have been presented to us, and and a big trick to everybody's like, oh well. You know, the whole divine geometry movement, which I, I love, and you, and you really do discover like amazing synchronicities in the existence around you, and I recommend it for everybody to learn. Uh, but isn't it really just a higher level cage that's going to stop you? I mean, it is, a, it, is, it is an octave up from the basic, basic binary code like language that we're speaking and a lot of our basic symbolism. It is definitely the next octave up, the next set of harmonies, which must be learned. Um, but it's still just a very numerically based, very solid, synchronistic thing that's happening around you in this little holographic universe that we're projecting. And we're projecting this holographic universe uh, by reacting to other people's stimulus. Because no one can control you. Because you do have this energy within you to make some sort of choice. Even if the choices come out following some mathematical free progression will. or free this will. and that, the, you many the call it free will. Free will. Many call it free will, and it's a great way to call it. Um, but how do you go uh, applying this this free will and this existence based on infinity? That takes studying knowledge. Knowledge helps you. Wisdom, wisdom, studying knowledge through wisdom. You know, that's how you gain your wisdom by studying knowledge. But don't be put into the cage. Don't let yourself and start recognizing uh, some of these snare holes. That wow, that's really going to symbolically do this to my mind you know is it good is it going to is it going to help free my conscious mind or is it going to help slow my conscious mind down is it a blockade or is it a window is it a blockade or is it a window is it going to reach to other octaves am i going to be able to expand the energy or is it is it stopping my energy somewhere through the symbolism well one of the one of the things i think that can stop that can, that can be a stopping force is for example when when the way uh, he, you touched on the way we react to things. So the next development in one's consciousness is being able to exist. It's like uh, in quantum physics and in, in, in space science. So being the uh, black matter, like everything's existing, and so am I. You know. So that way, I uh, applying my free will. What, which is an, an excellent point so it doesn't he, get he just worse. made. An excellent point, and tell me if I'm if I'm interpreting it right. Um, but it, it seems like because you know, everybody has their own free will energy, we're all existing together. That it is all these things that I have no real control over, and everybody else's free will that is creating the parameters of my destiny per se it's creating the parameters for me to make choices within everybody else's free will and this conglomeration of all free wills of all living things down to every single molecule at times infinity uh, is the only thing that we can quantify as calling God if you, if you want to take it there every single living thing's free will creating this existence for me to be in and then everybody including me creating this whole thing for, for him to be in and he's in his own universe while we're all in the same universe together. And we're all affecting each other. Now this again is where the other psychological snare will come up. If other people learn how to just basically make signs to distract you. To take your observation energy so you keep perpetuating and creating the same existence that you're stuck in. Not you, not me, not him, just in general. Uh, we get stuck in, the, in a loop. Uh, because we're wasting our observation energies on the wrong things. Our prayer observation energy is being stolen from us through sports, media, uh, selling sex. Stealing your time. Stealing your time, your thoughts, and your observations. And back to quantum physics, observations create our reality. You know, there, there is an, a, an element to that that is worth at least looking into. So be careful what you observe and be careful what you spend your time thinking about and what you spend your time putting your energy into and that's why they call it paying attention be careful what you pay attention to because you're gonna buy something that you're not looking for so you have to make sure that you maximize your time you cannot waste time time is valuable so do not waste it 
stay active, keep the legs moving, you know, like they say in football. And that's a great way to use time as a, as a tool in your, you know, set for the way you manage your life. And that's, you know, again, so you have now the con your conscience, your time, and also let's bring up your health and your physical body and how you could use that as a tool yes. to uh, pr you know, produce for your cause. Yes, don't, yeah, don't deny, just because you're going to be a spiritual being, you don't have to deny your human body because it, it, this is also can be used as a gift. Like we've been put into this, this vibrational harmony to exist and be grounded. Our bodies ground us to the earth and they ground us to the, this, this dimension that we're existing in right now. And I like to believe that this gives us the ability to free our consciousness. Now that we've been grounded, so your body needs to be taken care of. You need to try to stay healthy and eat healthy and uh, quit eating all the, the poison foods that are on the market. You know, just try to eat more greens and realize, wow, they're really poisoning all these animals that we're eating every day. It's about trying to keep your, your body's pH alkaline. Chemically speaking. So be the true to yourself. Yourself. And to have fun. Try to have fun in life. Yeah. Try to enjoy your life and like try to make people happy. One of the provisions, happy. joy, can be viewed as a provision. Joy is a reward for your hard work, which will give you the strength to endure. Knowledge. It's like the grease on the motor. You got a beautiful motor, y'all. Wonderful. The knowledge is like, you know, there's a, the black hole and it's doing this thunder. Well, knowledge is that black, again, the black matter, where the ocean, where it floats. Mm. Knowledge. Knowledge well, that's, the that's probably knowledge, because they're saying like knowledge is actually like learned things, things that you have learned. For that to be the vast ether. The dedication and love of knowledge. Well, no, I did the love of knowledge it is uses the better energy. motor oil and better gasoline no, this good. engine. The love of knowledge is the ether. I agree, like love energy in general, and the love of the love of knowledge is the positive vibration. You know, that that, that is very necessary. Uh, and I believe it is as necessary as a negative vibration. It's just easy to interpret the negative vibration wrong because of the signs that are that have been put in front of us by other beings who can't really control us, but they can only suggest things. Things can only be suggested for you to control yourself into the suggestion. That's the big pitfall. That's what keeps everybody in the psychological cage. That we have to free, to free your consciousness. To be all that we can be in this universe. You know, uh, and, and, and help nature grow and, and help life grow. And, we should be very happy to eat healthily and take care of ourselves and take care of uh, those around us. One way that we can do that is by making education accessible and affordable. And as you know, we have proven time and time again for years and years, education, I firmly believe that education should be free for all. So it's universal. Yeah. Let it be a gift. Yes. Knowledge. So, and that, you know, all right, so let's touch on like what we were talking about earlier, though, because I think you know, like, like the real subject was how people use, how, how people weaponize faith. Yeah. So it's, like, it's the act. It's not faith. It's the act of weaponizing things. Yeah. You know, their bodies, their faith, their thoughts. Right. You know, you know they, these are like parasitic, irrethelial acts. And you can only trick one who does not think much for themselves. Wait, before we go proceed, I'm gonna invent, let's invent a, a, a philosopher, a famous philosopher from the Greek era. Uh, invent one. What, what name would you name him? I say Savilax. <laughs> oh, that was good. Uh, I was gonna say uh, Sacomedius. Right, so so that's better. Sacomedius thought of this. There you go. Yeah, yeah, he's got uh, the real, and so he's got the real philosophy. Yeah, he know he knows the truth. Back. Yeah. So that guy says that when you impose your beliefs on others, you're weaponizing them. Mm -hmm. 
when you pass judgment on others, you're weaponizing your beliefs and now acting as a judge, therefore now causing, you're becoming a marshal of sorts. You're having actual physical effect on our forests. They're like, hey, have you trained yourself as such? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. It's like, it's, it's like when you speak negative, harsh tones to a glass of water and look at it under a microscope, the molecules of the water get distorted. And then when you speak loving, kind words to the, to the water, or just loving, kind tones and the energy projection to begin with, the water gets harmonious and beautiful. So it's having an effect on nature around you. And then beings who can learn to manifest the octaves of their energy and their frequencies, they can push frequencies farther out. Uh, it's sort of a responsibility to, to think about what you're doing and the cause and effect you're having on the universe around you. Because your power of suggestion gets very strong. And then people start getting misled very fast. So even if you do know what's right, uh, if you tell what's right to the wrong person, Which is a broad, a broad, a broad term to bring it, uh, to bring up, you know, telling what's right to the wrong person. Well, why, it almost acts like a, a, okay, the opposite. That might know. bring the next question. Well, why did you do it? And then it could be measured. Now the why enters the letter with the long, long tail. Yeah, yeah. Now why, why would you be weary of giving certain truths to people who are not ready for those truths? You can be waking up zombies, you mean? Or you can be waking uh, people up when they're dormant? Well, once... The thing is, if you try to wake people up when they're dormant, like, oh, we want to, we want you to wake up, you know? Don't wake up. But you got to remember, I mean, all, see, go see. all that we can do is the power of suggestion, and then people are going to make their own decision. Uh, now, now, thinking almost as the enemy would think through the power of suggestion, it's a very, very subtle art that's being presented to you. So very slow and subtle and then you just you're slowly feeling relaxed with it and, oh and you're, you're you're learning more and your psychological okay just slowly growing 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 and you've manifested it so strong you're in a you're in a ball of steel so now that you're going to tell a man who's in the ball of steel a direct truth of what's really going on is that is that going to work or do you have to go so slowly penetrating into the ball of steel with a little bit of idealism that you're not even trying to impose. It's just pure positive energy that is flowing through you. Because it can flow through everybody. It's, it's our gift. It's our gift to be a, a actual beings here on this dimension. Like we, it's, it's a real gift. So you can't just slap out the big, the big picture for everybody sometimes. Because if it was that easy, then we'd be good. You know, you, hey, five minutes into, uh, you know, half of these conversations, the whole world would be a better place. Well, this is, this is part of making the world yeah. a better place, making these comments, kind of conversations sure. accessible and it's just who, to who's, all people. They have to be accessible to all people, and that's just why, why we're doing that. And can you have it on such a level that they're going to not be offended by it, or they're, they're going to see it, and they're actually going to absorb it and apply it? Therein, therein lies, therein lies the great task. That takes time. It has to be a slow-moving pulse. Organization. It takes um, pruning the the bonsai. I, I, see, as Guillermo speaking in metaphors again, <laughs> pruning the bonsai is uh, removing the friction. You want to be tough and smooth to swim through the ocean. It's like how the eagle breaks his beak and grows a better one, and now it can really sore and hunt is the way they use eagles to hunt wolves <laughs> <laughs> you know you could, Mongolian golden eagles they hunt wolves Mongolian golden eagles so yes. it is what you do with your thoughts that become the definition and, and the, the next level of it are what results are you getting Yes, my friends. What result are you getting? Uh, so yeah. Check the frame. Is it recording or have we been talking about shit for free? 
No, it's still going. Oh, it's still God cooking. Noodles. Yeah. All right, let's sign out. Yeah, this is a uh, it's a great great conversation. We touched touched on some big topics today, and uh, I feel like we have all grown together. Yeah. Uh, I remember. Uh, this uh, nine years, ten years. I'm doing galleries, so this these conversations have been happening for for about ten years. It happened in. Uh, the, the Tampa the Ebor Art Stand. It happened Ebor Art in, Stand uh, is deep, deep. in South Beach, in Artist Revolution yeah. Studios, in the Ice Palace. Uh, we had for the philosophy classes. Yes. Yeah, going and strong. Education to the kids there too, and, and for the community. They were really teaching us yeah. though. Yeah. We even we even had up with Scott Smith. Scott yeah, Smith. Great musician. I love his music. We played it in the studio. So much. I love him. Very talented musician. He'll come by, sing to us while we were painting in the gallery in Española way. Artist Revolution Studios One, and we did those the shows on Lincoln Road with the Ice Palace, and yeah, was good. you know all the Chelsea galleries. You know since 2010, so this is seven years of galleries in Chelsea and you know 27th Street, 547 yeah. West 27. We're opening up again here very soon. And and, and 548 West 28. Yeah. Both yeah. sides of Chelsea. We'll so uh, yeah, come come see us uh, soon. We've got some new movies coming out. Everybody keep their eyes open. Cool things are happening. And uh, just be happy, be happy, and, and, and love everybody. Must even, love everybody. Even when you're angry, just uh, learn learn from the anger. You know, embrace it. You remember the meat grinder wants meat to run into it, so yeah. it's like don't run into things. Be like water. Yeah. You look at people like the the, the siren, in, in, the, in the, the 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 fire trucks and the, in the ambulance sirens. You don't you don't react to they go by they're making noise. Okay, okay. They went by they made noise. And you, you you stay focused. Now the tools to stay focused is do not waste your time. Work out, exercise, and have an actual practicality. Use your body to have the energy to get things done and be productive. You have to be productive, and that's how you have reciprocity with the abundance of creation. And eat well, eat good. Eat well, eat avoid well. the chemicals, disinfect your body, keep clean, Lots of greens and alkaline. fruit. Lots of greens and fruit. Also, don't weaponize your faith and your beliefs and your religion. And, 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 and because that, you know, you're, you're stepping on our garden. Yeah. And I say just truly believe. Just truly believe. And eventually, once you get to a state of actual true belief, you're going to be in harmony. We've had 10 years of galleries, art schools. We've taught thousands of, of, of teenagers, children, adults, thousands of people, thousands of paintings, 42 countries, 50, 60 countries of, of you know, our art has been gone, shipped out to, you know, thousands of paintings, thousands of homes, you know, thousands of years, thousands of people we've interacted with and, and have given hope and exchanged that message of hope and, and, and friendship and fellowship and, and that reward that is love. So that's what, it, this is where this conversation comes from. So thank you guys for tuning in. We, we enjoy more segments. There's a few more coming. So get ready though, because we just opened the chamber. Beep, 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 beep. Check if it's on. So now it could be thugs. Nope, still going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still going. Okay, okay, I'm going to tell you what's really going on now. Oh, yeah, yeah, we like to fucking party. New York City. What a city. It's a magical place. Is it a magical place? It's a magical place. No place is a magical place.
man. <laughs> Tom.